Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we talk about the foundational doctrine, the four baptisms, and um, it is my privilege to sharing, I apologize to sharing with you tonight and um, to just look at this, this um, topic from a point of view of how do I go about discussing this in a home fellowship, in a small group in um, at home or on Wednesday evening when we are in the in the small groups, for example. So um, the, the key is that you and I understand and remember that we are busy getting to know how to, to present these different um, topics. And um, I'm just going to screen share for one second and um, share with you what I have on my mind. Um, um, this evening and uh, let me just get uh, this box out there so I can admit everyone uh, my apology my administration gone a bit array tonight um, as I don't have a co-host my co-host have not appeared yet but I see him I see him um, in the room so um, we will we will get there so tonight we talk about um, Home fellowship facilitators, and we talk about the topic that we that we um, just discussed, and the topic that we discuss is, um, is around the four baptisms. But remember, when we are doing a home fellowship, when we talk to people in a home fellowship in a small group, it's imperative that we understand it's all about fellowship, sharing, participation, and contribution. So I have to get the people to be comfortable to feel that they in fellowship. I have to get it for the people to be so that they um, comfortable to um, uh, be sharing as well as that they um, participate. And that's the, that's the trick. That's the whole idea. And, and with being a, a um, home fellowship facilitator, um, that's our, ga our, our end game is to get everyone in the room to fellowship share, participate, and, contribu and contribute. Remember, uh, a facilitator must make it possible and easier for people to do something more easily to find answers to a problem. And I know I say this a lot, but I didn't say it last week. So I, I gave it a little bit of a skip last week because I know you, you don't want to hear it every time. But it is so important that I actually should say it every time. But let that, let that be as it may. Tomo tonight, we talk about the four baptisms, and I just quickly want to show you the four baptisms on one screen so that we understand this, so that we can go and talk about the facilitation um, for, for this part. And um, the first baptism is baptism into the body of, of Christ, and um, that's the, the, the first baptism. And um, as, I, as I said earlier, the baptizer is the Holy Spirit. Um, if there's a name like the baptizer word, I don't even know if that is an English word. Um, the candidate is the repentant sinner. That is the person um, coming to salvation. The element is the body of Christ. So we are baptized into the body of Christ and uh, the scripture that I read earlier. The, the second one is um, the baptism in water. And, and remember, I um, said earlier, uh, Pierre, I did make you co-host. If you will help me in assisting the people in the room, I'll really appreciate that. Thank you, buddy. Um, um, Pierre and Marion are always assisting, and um, it uh, helps a lot because then the presenter can, uh, can focus. But um, the, the key is baptism in water, the baptizer, a believer, any believer. Any person that is a believer can baptize you. And remember, if you a father, if you a family member, a brother, a sister, a mother, um, if you a fellow believer, it is very nice if you baptize someone in the family. Because every time you get together as a family, that is a special bond. Because you know what happened on that specific day. And you constantly are the reminder to your family and your friends with regards to um, baptism. Um, I have various friends whom I baptized, and I treasure, absolutely treasure, 
that privilege. Um, uh, the, the candidate is the new believer, the element is the water, and if we go to baptism in the Holy Spirit, the baptizer is Jesus Christ himself, the candidate's the believer, because that person now has grown as a believer, and the, the element is the Holy Spirit. If we go to the last one, the baptism into suffering, which is the one that no one wants to hear about, um, but that is part of being a fellow believer. Jesus Christ said that um, you will suffer um, in this world if you, if you decide to follow him. But remember the key scripture that I read there, the key scripture there, and I just want to make sure that I grab that scripture again because it is important that we know, and please make a note of this scripture, James 5, verse 13 to 15. Please make a note of this scripture. If you haven't noted down the scripture, please note it down. James 5, verse 13 to 15. Because baptism into suffering is not sickness. Because I find people who, when we talk to them, they say, but I'm suffering this illness, this sickness. And that is my suffering for the Lord. And I want to tell you that you don't have to suffer for the Lord that way. Because he said, there's a cure for that. Go find the, the elders to come and pray for you, to anoint you with oil. Um, we should not suffer sickness. God, Jesus Christ died on the cross for every sickness, infirmity, and disease. And we should not suffer that and think that we suffer that for the Lord. Um, we should stand against that. We should go find fellow believers to pray with us and um, to stand against it. And I know there might be some of you on the school who are sick at this moment. I know there are some of you on the school who are in, in, at a place of illness. And um, I truly pray that God will have mercy on you and, and, um, and um, uh, heal you and uh, do the complete work. And we know that some people don't get healed when we pray for them. Some do. And it is just as it is. I cannot question God. I cannot question God. I have to, to um, step in and just um, thank him for the fact that I can pray. I can sit with, with people that are, that are sick and we can pray and we can press in and we can believe that they will be healed. Baptism into suffering is the world because the, the baptism into suffering happens in the world. The candidate is a believer. The element is the suffering. And... Um, Whenever we discuss, you discuss this in a small group, it makes for an, an interesting evening because we have to make sure that people understand the different uh, baptisms. We have to make sure that people understand that there are different baptisms because if they don't understand it, how will they grow into the different baptisms? Um, I have in front of my Bible, which I've showed you previous times or multiple times before, I have in front of my Bible the date in which I committed my life to the Lord, that I came to salvation. I have written in front of my Bible the date that I, that I um, was water baptized, the date in which I, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Um, I don't have a date for baptized in suffering. Um, I don't have a date for that. And um, I regularly suffer for God. Why? Because your strengths, whatever your strengths are in the gospel, whatever your strengths are, whatever your gifts are, whatever the things are that you are bringing to fellow believers, those are the areas in which you will, in which you will suffer, in which other people will ridicule you, will attack you, which other people will take you on. And um, it's cool. Never, ever make it personal. It's not personal. Um, don't suffer indignity. Um, hear them out, listen to them. Sometimes we have to listen to people. Sometimes we just have to say, you know what? I'm sorry. I repent. I truly say, I'm sorry. The best place that I can be is to say, you know what? I'm humbled by the, by the um, uh, words that you just um, gave me of where I done something to you that you took offense of. And um, please accept my apology. And help me so that I don't do it again. Next time when I do it, immediately talk to me about it. 
um, don't go talk to someone else. Talk to me and um, get people to talk to you with regards to to those things. Um, the, um, the, the key is that um, you and I have to talk about it. We have to talk about it. Now, if you go to the small group and we want to talk about the different baptisms, remember, it is easy if you can start and just say, guys and girls, tonight we talk about this topic and I'm privileged because I can tell you that I'm... Um, uh, baptized into the body of Christ on that day. The day that I committed my life to Jesus Christ was that day. And you just give them a one line, not the long story, not everything that happened on that day, just a short. This is what happened. I'm, I'm so privileged that I can tell you that I am water baptized. It took me this long. Remember in the, the previous teaching, I told you that from the day that I um, was baptized into the body of Christ, came to salvation, and till the day that I was baptized in water, significant time passed. Why? Because for me, it was something that I had to work through because of the religion that I, that I um, were brought up in. The church that I was brought up in, uh, well, not religion, the church that I was brought up in, the different dogma, the different way of looking at a baptism. And I had to work through it because I had to make sure that I don't do it because one of my friends, because the day that I committed my life to Jesus Christ, all my friends wanted to, me to baptize, be baptized immediately. But I wasn't ready because I was still holding on in the ways that I was brought up, in the way that I understood the gospel until that day. It didn't just disappear and, and I had a new gospel. I had to learn. I had to work on it. And it's imperative that you encourage the people in your life group, in your, in your small group, in your um, home fellowship, that you encourage them that they discuss and talk about this. Why? So that those people who have not uh, been water baptized can say, you know what? I have not been water baptized. It's no shame. It's absolutely no shame to not be water baptized. You don't have to be ashamed for that. Because the Holy Spirit has to convict you to do it. And don't be shameful for that. Be open to that. Say, I've been baptized as a baby, maybe. If some of you might have been baptized as a baby, as I was. I have a, a baptism certificate that's bigger than the rapport. And um, uh, I still have it today. Um, but the, the key is, that's how we were brought up. I should not be ashamed of that. But I moved on. It took me some time, but I moved on because I found the scriptures. And you know what? It's not that I found the scriptures. It's not that someone gave me the scriptures. It's that the scriptures found me. The Holy Spirit found me around those scriptures. And the Holy Spirit told me to be baptized. And I can still remember the day. Um, the day that I was baptized was the 13th of July in a cold, cold cold baptismal pool, um, not in a heated one, on the 13th of July, in a cold winter. Um, that was like dying um, and getting out of there. But the key is, um, I was privileged that I could work through it over time and got the conviction of the Holy Spirit to do it. And then I've done it. But I cannot today be smart in front of other people about that. I cannot now talk as if I'm higher than someone that's not being baptized. I cannot. All I can do is I can offer them the scriptures. I cannot convict them. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. But I can give them the scriptures. I can show them the scriptures. We can discuss it. We can openly discuss it. But it's not for me to convince them to get baptized. It's not for me to convince someone into baptism in the Holy Spirit. For me, it happened without me being prayed for. I was praying for other, for other guys in a small group. I was praying that they will pray because they were afraid to pray. It was for most of them the first time in the life that I, they had to say a word or two in prayer aloud before other people that they didn't, they didn't know before. But in that moment, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. 
And the first moment that I heard it, it was a shock. And I had to think. And my brain kicked in. And I started praying in Afrikaans again. And the next moment, I started praying in, in, in um, my heavenly language again. And that's how it started. In a moment. But the key is, if you're privileged to have had that experience before, to talk about it. If you don't have that, never had that experience, don't talk about it. Don't make up a story. Find someone that have experienced it. Some Find someone that's been baptized in the Holy Spirit, baptized in water. Find someone that, ask them to tell their story. Because it is something that we have to do. <laughs> it's a given. But it's not for me to convince you. I can give you the scriptures. It is a commandment in the scriptures. It is something that you have to go and do. But it's not for me to convict you. It's for me to help you and assist you and guide you, give you the truth, and for the Holy Spirit to convict you to go into the step of doing it. So baptism into suffering. Um, remember what I said. Illness, sickness, disease is not that. So please, please um, don't talk about illness and people suffering illness as um, baptism into suffering. This suffering is persecution from other people because you are um, testifying of the greatness, the full work of the cross. That is baptism, in, uh, uh, baptism into suffering. Okay, please don't go try and find it. It's not, a, it's not a badge that you can wear. It needs a burden. Don't go try and, and find it. Don't go try and tell people, you know what, I'm baptized into suffering for the Lord because I'm following him and people are persecuting me. Don't go there. Um, don't go there. It's not, uh, it is something, something that you endure in silence. It's something that when you get the attack on you, you just take hold of and say, thank you, Lord. I give this back to you. Allow this not to, uh, not to harden my heart. Allow me not to carry um, offense. Allow me to, to speak freedom. Allow me to release the person. Allow me to um, love the person into wholeness. Because most of the time, it's purely because they're not where you are. And that's why they do it. They're not seeing it from the, the, the way that you see it. And that's why they take offense. And it's imperative that you're not better than them. Um, so baptism into suffering, persecution because you are a fellow believer, is not something that you should go hang on the on the bell tower in, in town and for everyone to see. It is something that you do in your on your own. So um, in the in the life group, last thing that I want to say before I open the microphones, if there's uh, someone that would like to ask something or say something. The key is with the four baptisms, um, when you talk about one of the baptisms in a life group, in a small group, when you talk about one of the baptisms, if you have a teaching on one of the baptisms, don't re continually refer to the others. Tonight was different because tonight we shared on all four of them. Tonight we shared on them. And I've never, ever before, I cannot remember, my wife is on the call, maybe she can correct me, um, I'm, uh, but I, I, I think I'm 100% I think I'm sure that we never spend an evening on baptism into suffering. But it is something that comes up with other topics. It is something that we talk about, but it's not a teaching that we do for a whole evening. But we will have a teaching on baptism in the Holy Spirit for a whole evening. Because there's just so much that we can learn and can find and can, can, um, can see and, and can get in the Spirit on baptism in Holy Spirit. A baptism in water, there's so much in there that it is worth a whole evening spending time on that. Um, baptism into the body of Christ um, is something that we can spend a whole evening on because that's the mission field. Um, that is, um, I am a missionary at heart. I'm one of those very simple missionaries. I just want to go tell people about the gospel. It doesn't have to be glamorous. It doesn't have to be anything. I just want to go tell people I'm a missionary at heart. That's my first gift. Um, then the others um, came next to it, um, supporting it. But that's my first gift. I'm a missionary. And um, 
So baptism in the body of Christ is very important to me. And whenever you talk to me on any of these, I will always go back to that one. But last thing that I say is, whenever you're in a small group, make sure and you, you, you teach on this, make sure you teach on every one of them except baptism in suffering. Teach on it for the whole evening. Teach on it because allow people to, to interact. But once you've done the three of them, baptism into the body of Christ, baptism in water, baptism in the Holy Spirit. Once you've done the three of them and spend the whole night on it, allow the people to go back home, allow them to spend time with the Lord on the subject, allow them to come back to you with questions. Only after you've done all three of them, do you one evening talk about all four of them as we've done now, um, to just pull them together and to show people, because it's different when you put the one next to the other in this uh, format that um, Dr. Frost um, is given us in the um, foundational doctrines. So with that, I'm going to open the, allow the participants to unmute themselves. So if there's someone that would like to, to add something um, or someone that would like to ask something, um, otherwise I will close for us in prayer and um, say, I see that there are conversations. Sorry, I did not read all the conversations. Um, as we go, Tanya Grunewald, I see what you say and I agree. Um, so um, for everyone, thank you for, for um, sharing. And um, I trust that you're getting something every Thursday evening. And you'll see that we go at a very slow pace. We go at what's the topic, where we're in. And um, the key is that you not um, take offense to the slowness that we do this. And um, because we're not valuing you small we just value the topic so grand that we are willing to just take baby steps in getting there and soon we will be out of here for a few days over christmas and soon we will find each other in 2021 can you believe it soon we will find each other in 2021 and uh, we will start doing it differently we will maybe some of you will start having a small group at home maybe um we, some of you start having actual people around and um, uh, we will go into that in 2021. Only God knows what 2021 will bring and how true was that for 2020. Um, Neil, I've seen that you unmuted yourself. Um, if you would like to say something, Neil Bredenkamp. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Um, I just want to know which, which of the baptism is associated with speaking in tongues? I know Dr. Derek Prince says that uh, uh, when you get baptized into water, you you can you must also get speak in tongues. He says get the whole package in one go. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, Neil. Um, it is a it is a great um, question, um, and I would like to comment. Dina, I see your mic is unmuted. I will get to you now. Allow me to just uh, quickly clarify uh, what Neil has, has asked us, and thank you, Neil. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I know, I know what um, uh, Neil is talking about. The key is, for a lot of people, baptism in, in um, the body of Christ, the, sal the prayer of salvation, getting sal uh, salvation, committing their life to the Lord, is an island event. It is a one-step event, especially for those who've been in church all their life. For someone that's, that come into hearing about the gospel for the first time, for whom it's fresh, for them it's different. And I, I've had the privilege of, of dealing with that um, one year on Christmas Day. My wife in Morocco had the privilege of leading a Muslim to the Lord on Christmas Day after lunch on the top, on the roof of a hotel. Um, someone that, that's not been exposed to the gospel the way that you and I were exposed to it from, from young. And most of us on the call have heard some form of gospel earlier in our life or before. Um, baptism into the body of Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit. That means that gift. Can you remember when we talked about um, salvation? You receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. The indwelling Christ comes in with um, baptism into the body of Christ, salvation. But for a lot of people, they take a little bit of time to open that gift, to actually operate in the Holy Spirit. But I've, I've said earlier in the previous teaching that I've seen people 
while doing the sinner's prayer, start talking in tongues. I've seen people while being baptized in water start talking in tongues. I see people baptized in the Holy Spirit without talking in tongues. There is no formula with God. So yes, Neil, the, the, the beautiful part will be if someone understand the gospel and um, heard the gospel before and they baptized into the body of Christ and they start speaking in tongues. Um, and um, it, is, it is an absolute... Remember, the moment that I commit my life to Jesus Christ, I receive the Holy Spirit as the indwelling Christ. It's just some people take some time to unwrap the gift and understand what they received and to understand the power of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling Christ, and to start using that power of the indwelling Christ, speaking in tongues. But remember, not everyone receiving the baptism in, in, into the Holy Spirit, talking tongues. So I cannot say to someone that tell me I have received the indwelling Christ the Holy Spirit, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I did not receive a tongue. I don't have the right to tell them that you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit because you're not speaking in tongues. And there is no formula with God. Um, so, but for some people, it can happen. I have seen it with my own eyes. Salvation prayer, in uh, speaking in tongues, want to be baptized immediately, and we go outside to the pool, baptize them, they speak in tongues. They're baptized in the Holy Spirit. They have the big bang kahuna. God was uh, not that fast with me. Um, I had to think about this. I had to, to get myself ready for this. So I hope I answered you in some sort of way. Neil, Dina, Barnard, um, I see that you're unmuted. Um, thank you, Pastor Dani. Um, tonight it was quite a revelation for me um, to know that there are four baptisms. I only thought there was... Only two, but thank you. That is quite a revelation. But my question is, how are we, you just said we must, um, in the small groups, we must especially talk at one of, at, um, about one baptism at a time. But how are we supposed to do it next week when um, we only, we have the four topics? So how must we, we do that? Cool. Thank you, Dina. My apology that I didn't make it clear. Um, I spoke about when you're in a small group and you're planning your, your small group and you're busy with your program is to do them one at a time. Remember, we've done them one at a time already in previous teachings. We've dealt with each one of them separately except for baptism into suffering. And tonight, we pulled the four of them into one presentation. So tonight we talk. So uh, Wednesday next week, we will talk about all four as we've done tonight. So uh, thank you, Dina. Um, my, my suggestion to you was just when you have a, a, a small group, when you have your own small group, when you start doing your own, your own um, small group um, and um, you start preparing what to teach, teach about salvation a whole evening. Don't include the others. Teach about baptism a whole evening. Teach about baptism in the Holy Spirit a whole evening. But after you've done those separate teachings for the whole evening, for people to come back and talk about this and actually go into action, and some of them get baptized, some of them get baptized in the Holy Spirit, some of them do the sinner's prayer. Only after you've done all that, one night, say, okay, but tonight we're going to talk about all four of them so that we can put them linearly next one after the other. As you said, uh, Dina, for me it was, you know what, maybe you've heard of all four of them, but because you never had them squeezed into one page. And that's why I've put that page on tonight, for you to visually, visually see it so that we can see that there are different baptisms. Um, and, um, but the baptism into suffering is not a topic that I will spend a whole night on. Cool. Thank you, Dina. Um, Patrick Brink, last one for the evening. Uh, did you unmute yourself by accident? Because I see you, you unmuted yourself again. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's pray. Lord, we just come and we say thank you that we could teach on this topic tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will be the one that will help us and assist us to take this forward, that will help us and assist us to know how to, when to, where to, and what to say. Holy Spirit, give us the boldness not to pull away from anyone that opened the discussion into any of these areas. Allow us to to see this, allow us to experience this. And Lord, everyone on this call who has not done the sinner's prayer, who has not received mm -hmm. salvation, 
anyone that's not been water baptized, mm-hmm. fully submerged, merged, water baptized as an as a adult person, as a as a mm-hmm. person that can make the decision themselves, not necessarily mm-hmm. an adult in the in the after their teens. Lord, we pray for them that they will see the value of that, that the Holy Spirit, that you will be the one convicting them, not for us to convict them, Holy Spirit, but that you will be the mm-hmm. one visiting with them. On that area, someone that's not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, someone that's not speaking in tongues, someone that has not experienced the, mm-hmm. the full power of applying the Holy Spirit. Lord, we just pray that you will come and help them and assist them in the days coming so that they understand that and implement that. Because this is our prayer so that every one of us will have a testimony in every one of these areas. Mm-hmm. And Lord, whether for some of us it happens in one day, whether it happens in, in different days, whether it happens months or years apart, Lord, we know it doesn't matter. It matters our relationship with you because everything is about you, Lord. Because mm. everything is about you, Lord. You first. And because we press in with you, we know that you will bless us with understanding this and actually institute and implement this. Everyone says, Amen. 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 My apology, Patricia. I see that you unmuted yourself. <laughs> Can I talk? Why not? Um, I was just a little bit confused. I wasn't aware so much of the baptism in suffering. And if you look at the other baptisms, um, it's an ongoing thing. Now, what happens with baptism of suffering? If you are in a ministry where you get a lot of persecution, you can say, fair enough. But what if it's something that you experience today and maybe only in a few months' time again? Do you still look at that as being you are in baptism of suffering? Um, Thank you. Or is it just... Yeah. No, thank you, Patricia. Allow me to answer okay. that. My apology. I started praying and I only seen. No, no, I did actually go and come back and go again. <laughs> cool. Baptism into suffering is not a continually everyday occurrence. It is something happening sporadically, not happening, happening. It is like persecution. It is people attacking you on the areas in 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 um, the gospel that you stand on the areas in the gospel that you are free on, the areas in the gospel. If you're a watchman on the wall, they will attack you on that. If you're someone standing for righteousness, they will attack you on righteousness. If you're standing for unconditional positive regard for people, people all the time take offense because you said something that they didn't like, that they didn't do. That is a baptism into suffering. It is to, to, have, to drink the cup of suffering that Jesus Christ um, drank and um, be part of that. But it is not something that's continually happen every day. It's not a suffering that it is because I confess Jesus Christ and I talk about Jesus Christ and I'm free in him that I am um, operating in that area. People will persecute you. Jesus Christ said, count the cost. And that is part of that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it was an absolute privilege sharing with you on this tonight. Um, have a blessed one. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Bring your friends. On a Wednesday, we actually apply what we learn. I appreciate you. We love you. Have a good one. Cheers.